Okay. All right. Excellent. Uh, this is Liz Soria. I am a tax accountant and I have created a few tax tip series um, to help all those taxpayers out there to really take advantage of any type of deductions and really uh, credits that might be available. But this specific uh, video is going to be about which deductions for small businesses are not tax deductible. Again, which deductions for small businesses are not tax deductible? Because I get this question asked a lot of times. So one of them, as you can see here in my screen as I'm sharing, is called certain legal costs, fines, and penalties. Now, let me explain. First of all, legal costs is always deductible, right? As long it's related to business, okay? Some of the common mistakes that I see, whether you're a freelancer, you're self-employed, or you actually do have a corporation, right? Meaning that you have an EI number, and perhaps you even pay yourself a payroll or your staff. The most important thing is that there's certain things that are not deductible. In other words, for example, let's say that uh, you got into, you know, a, unfortunately, uh, you know, a, a car accident, or you got with a DUI, or you get a traffic ticket, right? Those kind of deductions are not um, deductible, period. I mean, they're not business related. Um, uh, it, it's just, it's not. And I see that mistake, some people trying to, to, add that as an extra expense towards the company. So uh, just, you know, remember that uh, in the same has to do with when it comes to really um, the IRS payments. So if you are a, again, a self-employed or you are a self pass through entity, right? Like an LLC, but you have to file your schedule C and plus your 1040. All right. Those Taxes that is owed, okay, the self-employment tax, that is not paid out of your business checking account. That has to be paid out of your personal checking account. So I'm going to repeat that because, again, this is, I'm just sharing common mistakes that I see my clients going through, and I want you to avoid that, okay? Again, when taxes are due as a self-employed, okay, or as a pass-through entity, all right, you need to make sure that you have the money sitting in your personal account, okay? You don't pay out of your business checking account because that is your responsibility as a taxpayer, as the individual, okay? Remember, you took all your gross income minus all your deductions and whatever other depreciations that you were eligible for, and then you're left with what we consider a net income. Okay, that net income, if it's positive, then therefore you're going to need to pay taxes on that portion. Okay, so again, do not pay out of your business account for the IRS, anything that's related to federal taxes that belong to you. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Mileage related to one's normal commute. In other words, if you're, let's say, traveling to uh, Staples, and you need to go and buy some office supplies, right? And then suddenly you say, gosh, I forgot, I need to go and do some food shopping, right? When you're driving, let's say from your home office or your regular office to Staples, okay? Or, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, home office, then what's gonna happen is that portion is deductible, right? Because it's related to your business. You need to pick up maybe paper or ink, whatever might be the situation. However, if from there you decide that, oh, I'm on my way, let me go ahead and take advantage and I'm going to stop at the grocery and I'm just going to pick up a few staples, guess what? That is not deductible. So it's very important that you keep that track. And one of the things is I'm going to be sharing later on uh, some apps in another series that I'm creating, um, some uh, some are free apps, some you have to pay at minimum fees, but these are great because it keeps track of your mileage. So you can just easily on your smartphone or your iPhone, you can just plug in and say, okay, I'm going from this destination, right? Destination A to destination B, which is in this case to buy the office supply, right? And then from destination B, I'm going to cut off that commute because I'm going to the grocery store, for an example, right? So those are the things that we need to make sure that you keep track of because I always say, 
it's better to be ready than to be sorry because a lot of times little things like this can really get you in trouble and it's just not worth it, it really isn't. So the next one, personal expenses and activities, as you can see right here. Now, as we know, they're not deductible neither. And one of the things I, as you can see here in the bottom it says, uh, you know, this includes situations such as sports, hobby or recreation activity. Now, Back in the old days, and I said back in the old days, I'm talking about more than 10 years. I've been in this industry for nearly 16 years. <laughs> so um, we used to, IRS used to allow for you to take your clients out and obviously have a nice meal. But maybe after that, maybe you purchase the tickets for a baseball game or perhaps, you know, uh, football, whatever sport events that you like. And maybe your clients also share, right, uh, related um things that they, they enjoy with you um and unfortunately irs said this is it this is going to be finished because people unfortunately uh, uh you know took advantage of that and the reality is that irs said wait a minute how much conversation can you really have right uh if you're in the middle of a sports you know stadium right with all the noise and all the distraction how much business can you really talk so unfortunately, they became very strict about this and they removed that completely, whether it's sports or you're in a hobby, whether you're going golfing, for example, or maybe you're, in, in, I don't know, in a musical, you know, musical, in, uh, you know, uh, um, show, the same scenario. They want to make sure the people are deducting what they're actually um, you know, eligible for, right? And it kind of makes sense if you think about it. Um, like I say, unfortunately, you know, people did abuse the system. Um, so that's out of the question. So don't don't be adding with your business credit card or paying with your, you know, business checking, any related, like I said, sports or hobby or things that are really recreational, like you went to Walt Disney, for an example, and you say, oh, I got a few tickets for my uh, clients. It's not acceptable. And also, I want to add a, a caviar there. And that's another thing that the, the IRS became very strict. It was with cruises. Yeah. Um. So a lot of, in the past, people were also buying tickets. And if you don't rent the whole cruise, that's right. If you don't rent the whole cruise and you have an agenda of like, let's say you're going to go out for a day, 24 hours, two, three days, and you're not going to rent the whole cruise, that you are not able to deduct that expense neither okay so tickets are not deductible except like i said and i mentioned once again if you actually rent an entire cruise okay and then you can control the food and the agenda inside the cruise ship and things like that all right and finally i want to talk about political uh, po political contribution and that is i don't care where your blue side your red side it doesn't matter um, any contributions that you do, whether you think it's going to enhance, you know, your business or because something like that is going to be in your favor, um, money should not be paid out of your business neither. Um, politics is something that's very iffy um, and you have to be very cautious with that. So therefore, you know, uh, it's not really um they just don't want you to write it off. So I hope this kind of few tips can help you to stay out of the trouble and know clearly that you're not supposed to be deducting neither, like I said, any political contributions, uh, no personal expenses, like I said, when it comes to doing anything from sports and hobby and cruising, all right? And neither mileage, be very cautious, like I said, with that, have an app where you're able to really keep track of your personal and your business. And finally, like I said, legal costs, fines and irs payments that are due that's your responsibility i hope this has helped somehow and like i said go ahead and follow some of the other uh, tax i call it tax tip series right here um and this is going to probably help you i'm going to be talking about personal also the the biggest uh common deductions that you can take i'm going to be talking about another series about car mileage versus actual expenses which one's more beneficial okay and there's a few other series I'm going to be creating that way you prepare for your tax season and you're able to really utilize the maximum. I want people to enjoy, you know, all these wonderful uh, tax deductions and credits, by the way, they're available. And if you're wondering what is a tax deduction, that is a reduction of your income and usually a credit 
is something that you get a refund from, okay? So there's a big differential. And by the way, they also use very commonly the expression between tax deduction and write-off. They're both the same, by the way, but just a different you know, way of saying it. Anyhow, I hope this has helped. Again, my name is Liz Soria. Please like and subscribe. I've been sharing a lot of things out for the last couple of years.